I decided to share um, my story with you guys. I felt like it was about time and just that you guys know a little bit more about me and who I am today and how I got to where I am today. Um, and I have to give credit to God. That's just how it is for me. I wouldn't be who I am or where I am if it wasn't for God. And I wanted to be open and transparent with you guys just because I feel like this is something that is hard to talk about and it's something that um, not everybody's open to and not everybody understands. And my goal is just to to be honest with you and just to share my experiences and maybe there's something in there that you can relate to, maybe not. Um, but either way, I just wanted to share this. Basically, I grew up in a Christian family, so my dad's been a pastor at the same church since I was born, pretty much. And my parents are always really good about letting us find our beliefs for ourselves. And now, if you're anybody who has grown up in a religious family or any family that has any kind of belief, you get to a point in your life where you kind of have to discover, is it my belief? Is this truly how I want to live my life? Or is this just my parents' belief? Is this just what I've grown up with? Um, and that's kind of the struggle that everybody goes through. For me, I felt like that struggle was kind of compounded just by the fact that my dad was the pastor. And when you are part of the pastor's family, people watch you and they pay attention to you in a different way. And for me growing up, I found that to be really hard to deal with just because when you are a teenager and you are kind of trying to define who you are and what you believe about things, it's hard when you feel the pressure of other people watching you um, and when you feel like you have to be a certain way. And so basically for me, I accepted God or Jesus into my heart when I was like five or six, but that didn't really mean anything to me until I was about 15 years old. And when I was in sixth grade, I so like around 11, I met a new group of friends and they were going through some pretty tough struggles at home, um, even at such a young age. For me, I had always been blessed with such an awesome, solid family foundation. And that doesn't mean that we're perfect or that we've never had our issues. We've obviously had our challenges as well, but um, it wasn't at all comparable to what these people were going through. And for me, instead of viewing that as a blessing, I viewed it kind of as a curse. And it kind of was something that I took to make me feel inadequate or to make me feel insecure. Because I felt like if I hadn't gone through these things in my life and I didn't know how to deal with hardship, then how could I be considered to be a strong person or a brave person? I just felt insecure, immature, and weak. And so if you don't have those problems, what's the next best option? Well, you make up that you have those problems or you blow things out of proportion. And that's definitely what I did. I wanted attention and I wanted to feel good enough. When I got into junior high, um, I kind of became really ashamed by that and ashamed that I lied about those things or that I could do that and that I wanted attention in that way. Because when you get into junior high, there are a lot of kids who want attention, who are looking for um, validation and they that desire is so great in some people that they're willing to do some pretty crazy things. And so I was exposed to that now and I just kind of thought that was so dumb. I just felt embarrassed and angry because and hostile because I knew that was me inside and I think that's how we are about a lot of things we get hostile towards specific people because inside we're unhappy or we're insecure that we are that person or we're like that person so I just became very angry and very bitter at myself and I just became very angry and very bitter at everyone around me because I, I really felt like there was no one in my life that I could trust and there was no one in my life that truly cared about me Obviously, you know, being able to look in retrospect, I can see that that wasn't true and there were a lot of awesome loving people in my life, like my family especially, um, but at that time, I was so overwhelmed by my own shame and my own guilt that I couldn't see people's care and concern for me. Um, my dad made a good point one time and he told me that, you know, people don't judge other people, people judge themselves. And that's true. Um, we can be hypersensitive to judgment because we've already judged ourselves or because we feel insecure or we feel wrong about it in some way or upset in ourselves and that encapsulates everything that I was feeling and so when I would go to church I just felt like everyone was judging me um when I you know I just didn't want to be involved I felt like I was disappointing my family I felt like I could never live up to their expectations I compared myself to um everyone around me like especially my older sister I just kind of felt like she was you know, this godly example in the church, and that was never going to be me. And I just kind of felt like I didn't really fit. And I tried to keep things really private, and I didn't talk to anybody about anything. And I 
um, kept everything bottled up inside. I didn't share with my parents what I was going through because I didn't want to disappoint them. Um, in terms of my friends, I just kind of felt like I was always that expendable person in their life. And I felt like I couldn't rely on my friends to truly care about me or to pick me or to be there for me. And it just I felt like everybody just liked the surface me, but nobody wanted to get to know the inside of my heart. Or as soon as they did, they wouldn't want anything to do with me. And so my life kind of became about making myself more of a mess or trying to make myself so unappealing so that nobody would want to be with me. Nobody would try and reach in and touch my life because I was so afraid to be abandoned and to be rejected. And that was a really strong issue for me. And so I dealt with a lot of depression and just a lot of self-hatred and just a lot of, um, just a lot of pressure and a lot of things. And I was a very angry person. It all kind of came to a head when I was about 15. And I went outside and it had just finished raining and I just kind of felt like I was going to talk to God for the first time. Um, everything for me was probably a low point in eighth grade. Grade nine, I kind of started to turn around a little bit and I started praying again and stuff like that. But I wasn't really honest with God in my prayers. There were a lot of things I held hostage in my heart that I just, I wouldn't even think about when I was praying because it was as if God wouldn't know if I didn't think about it. And so one day, for whatever reason, I sat down and I wrote my life. Every single thing, as honest as I could about how I thought I got to where I was that at that point. And reading through it was when I finally realized that there was something wrong. There was something missing in my life. There was something that just was not right. It was like a light switch had gone off in my heart and my mind and I just saw everything in a different way. And I remember going outside and being like, okay, God, like, you know, just looking up at the sky and being like, God, are you a real thing? Like, do you exist? Like, do you even care about me? Do you know who I am? Like, do I matter? And uh, yeah, and it was just tough for me. And, and so I, I just got to a point and I really was like, okay, God, if you're a real thing, then here I am, take my life, take everything I have. Um, and I want to ask you back into my life and back into my heart. And so that's the quick nutshell version of uh, my whole little journey. Obviously, I'm 21 now, so that was like six years ago. But I, I feel like it's good sometimes when we look in retrospect because we can see things with a fresh and a new perspective. We can see things that we weren't able to see at that time in our life. But the disadvantage about um, being retrospective is that I don't feel like the emotions are the same because when you're going through something versus after you've gone through it, the emotions are completely different. And so what I wanted to do instead that was a little bit different other than telling you every little detail of my life, I decided to just read you um, a few things that I wrote during that time. The writing has been a big part of my life and it was an especially important part for me when I was going through this time, when I was in junior high. So. I'm just going to let those words and those emotions speak for themselves because I don't think that anything I can say will do them justice. So the first one here is called Frankenstein and I wrote this in 2005 so you can do the math on that one. Just a kid, only 13, newly junior high schooler, live in the teenage scene, came as a God-loving protected girl but society affected her world like a pile of clay waiting to be molded and put on display. Timid in the spotlight, didn't know what she was doing. She was giving up despite, like a puzzle with so many pieces of what she should have been, personality put into thesis. Like a real-life Frankenstein, the social butterfly, a new person outlined. She was everything, misloved, but she'd lost her wing because what you had to say lost its value, didn't matter anyway. Oh, so highly exalted, put up to a standard to come short, she'd be insulted. Soon she started hating you and your friends, all the time she'd been wasting. How cover-up made her pretty, you loving her looks because now they made her witty. Realizing she didn't build her life on a boulder. It's coming crashing down. She can't be no soldier. She hates this lifestyle that was never hers. Her life always on trial. And she'll resent herself because she lost who she was. Destroyed all for wealth. So much should have been protected. But no, she's now infected. So she screams and she cries. Finally realizing how bad she compromised. Now she sees the air of her ways. She's no longer pretty. They hate her nowadays. She shouts and she wails because what you made her has now failed. You don't want nothing to do with her. Now she knows that she's fake, she's got nothing left to offer. You can't see past the blood, sweat, and tears, dying inside, the girl of her years. Funny how she's hated the one thing you created. She looks to the crowd, tears coming down. She's speaking out loud, saying, am I not what you've dreamed? Is this not what you wanted? Am I not what I seemed? You made me who I am, now you hate your filth-built sham. A freak by creation, a child by nature, defined by a nation. This one's called God. It was also written in 2005. 
I know what lies in this life. It's been set here before me. Instead, I choose to ignore thee. Only one thing I can fulfill me, and this I know, but for some reason I just won't let it show. Call me selfish, this I am, because I won't give up everything I can. So I sit here now and wonder what, why, how, everything about you I don't allow. But the sad truth is, it's so much easier to turn away than say what it is you need to say. So many halfway followers, downtrodden all your words. What's happened to all the believers? The society downbreak, worlds of deceivers. Some say this be rebellion, thought shake. But how is it so many others feel the same heartache? Days go by and I wonder how it is I came across this blunder. Grade A material from birth, but family beliefs can't determine what you're worth. Fail proof at age three, too bad religion can't be put on safety. Just sad how much someone can change, having their thoughts be rearranged. What am I supposed to feel? Should every part of my life be real? There's no happiness guarantee. This life ain't a car. You can't get a warranty. Every thought, every day, only puts me further and further away. But imprints from childhood always stick like they should. And maybe sometime, this feeling will become just a rhyme. Two pieces of drama. This was written in 2006. In between who she's always been and who she ought to be, the difference of beneficial friends and just fake camaraderie, two pieces of drama built persona, this way and that way, always doing what she wanna. Not long ago she was lost and jaded, I'm still lost but not so faded, but graded because of what's expected, for so long she's done what's unaccepted, rejected and unexpected, secretly, because to be up front she's afraid, people hate what she's made of herself and her life. I know that and I've always been hiding my misguided ways, because the hard truth is, I'm not proud of what it portrays. But it's just now she don't hate what she's supposed to be, stuck because she's sick of the derailed me. So she wanders in this middle ground, wanting to move, but paralyzed because she's still not found exactly the right motivation to create motion, devotion, to kick back past atrocious, waiting between righteous and unrighteous, between being confused and bemused, pause between two people, up left or down right, trapped in the middle of a fight. Does she change for the better or stay with the past that always fed her? Does she turn away from temptation? Or embrace that relation? Will she let go of past ties or keep living in lies? It's a lifestyle decision requiring all her precision because if she makes a mistake, either way she might break because she's wanting more to this life, sick of running on the edge of a point on a knife. She's got to make it either way she chooses. She can no longer be the one that loses. So I wait in this divider, trying to be a fighter between the life that I need or the only one to make me succeed, between two pieces of drama. So this is the same year, so 2006. Um, but it's a few months later, it's after that day in the rain. For once, I have no words to say, no thoughts to think, no mistakes to regret, no desperation on sadness, no joke I could not laugh, no joy I could not feel, no love I could not live, no sorrow I could mourn, no mountain I could not climb, no gap I could not cross, indestructible nothing. And for once in my life, I'm content. I hope that um, helped give you a little insight into who I am and where I've come from. Um, I know that Christianity and just religion in general is a tough subject and something that um, is a very sensitive issue for a lot of people. Um, I just wanted to share my experiences and what I've gone through. And um, I don't believe that our feelings as human beings are unique. And I think that we can relate to each other even if we haven't gone through the same things. And so, um, this was my story. I hope that it encourages you um, maybe to share your own story. Thanks for watching.